Either one of you have got it. I'll call that. Oh, I'll throw in. Well, yours and 150 more. Oh, you bluffing, man. You bluffing. I just see that. This is one time you're going to be caught in a bluff. I'll see that, too. Well, you boys have got to be good. Full the highest bullets. Man, that beats me. How much do I owe you now, Skip? Well, that was 450. 4,250. Boy, am I rich. Oh, guess I'm just not living right. Here's Roy. How'd it go, Roy? Here, hold it. Have you got them? All of them? Five. That guy spit his great. He had a handwriting concession at Luna Park. Made a lot of money winning bets on imitating handwriting. He's got everything here. Names, hometowns, descriptions. All French? Yes, just like you said. You're a French work battalion. Take a look. Mm, it's pretty good. You don't have to know one looks too closely. If they hold out a Swiss border, we'll be okay. We'll study these. Make sure you know who you are, where you come from, and what your job is. Steve, take the window a minute, will you? Right. Well, let's just pretend we stopped again. Let's go over it. Halt. Van Uh, Francois Leveln? Fast matches the heat. <clears throat> Oh, Roy, you'll have to coach us in this. You're the only one who speaks French, you know. Yeah. I was thinking of something. What's wrong? Well, when I was over with Smitty just now, there was another fellow there. And I couldn't help getting the feeling that he knew something. You mean a German? No, no, he's one of our blokes. Well, surely he wouldn't say anything. Roy, you imagine no, things. Well, I don't know. Supposing you did. I mean, not supposing... Now, Roy, don't get last minute nerves. Besides, you've got a job to do. You've got to teach us these names. We're supposed to be Frenchmen. At least we must speak our names with a French accent. Mm -hmm. Stop worrying. All right. Now, what's yours? Uh, Francois Laverne. Francois Laverne. Uh, oui. And you? Jack Renard. No, no, it's Jacques Renard. Jacques Renard. It's a bit better. Why, what is it? The commandant, there is a prisoner outside. Well? He requests that he be allowed to speak to you. He says it is urgent. Very well. Send him in. Your word. Achtung! Kommen Sie mit! You wish to see me? Yes, sir. I have no time to waste. 
What's this urgent business of yours? I have some secret information for you, sir. So, some information. Yes, sir. that are shorted, and then make for the woods here. We'll give you 15 seconds, and then Chuck. Ten seconds intervals after that, Frank, Steve, and myself. Look, Mike, uh, if one of us gets spotted, the last man's sure to get caught. Well, one of us has to be last, and it was my idea. Something like that. Listen, <laughs> what is it? Hold it. Skipper? It's a patrol. Well, get down. Get the trees first. With any luck, in a couple of days we'll all be eating Swiss chocolate. Good luck, Roy. Cut as many of those wires as you can. Stand by, John. All right. Sunshine in Bermuda. I was... I was right about the escape. Yes. You won't forget your promise. You'll be sent back to your own country as soon as possible. In the next group? But the next group. You swine. You traitor. I am dead. Michael McCall, isn't it? Yes, sir. 
I'm very sorry, but we've been trying to trace the man who betrayed you and your friends, but it's quite impossible. You see, when Stalag 51 was evacuated, all the records were burnt, and the commandant was killed in an air raid. But surely, sir, there must be some way. I'm afraid not. Anyway, the investigation is now closed. Listen, McCall, the war's over now. I know that you'll probably never forget this incident, but don't let it warp your life. Try to put it at the back of your mind. Try to submerge it with, uh, with some hard work. I'll certainly try, sir. Good man. And now, Michael, let me give you a little personal advice. You know, we get a lot of fellows like you in here. Why don't you apply for a grant to have your face fixed? It'll give you a much better start, you know. Well, what do you say to that? All right, sir. Thanks a lot. Fine. Great to have you ask me to join you in the business. Well, look, Mike, we've been friends for a long time. We served in the Air Force together. I know what a tough break you've had, but I've asked you in with me only because I think you can help me to make this business into a success. I'm certainly ready for some hard work. <laughs> well, that's what it's going to take. I can't say I'd have chosen the perfume business, but, well, Dad's death made it mine. And while I was in the Air Force, the business has run down. But now I think it's got a very bright future. I want to make Revere perfumes into something really big. But it's going to take hard work and long hours. Now, will you say yes? When do I start? First of the month. Fine. You better read the rest of the staff. Miss Jones, send in Mr. Rogers and Mr. Howard, will you please? My name is McCall. I have a suite reserved. McCall from Toronto? That's right. Room 201. 17. I beg your pardon? Oh, that's all right. I was just counting the paces. Mm, yes, sir. Room 201, sir. It's a large suite. Oh, I'm sure I like it. Oh, Porter, that's for your consideration. Thank you, sir. If you don't mind, I'd like a few more minutes of your time while you familiarize me with everything in this room. Yes, sir. Well, by the clock is the best method. All right, here at... At three o'clock, there's a chair here, sir. Behind that, a grand piano. At nine o'clock, a sofa. Oh, just a minute. Behind that, a table. At ten o'clock, there's a book rack. Over there, sir. And behind that, a table. At 11 o'clock, the door going out to the balcony. Oh. Okay. That's a table in front of the sofa, sir. Oh, I see. London office. How nice of you to drop around. Forgive me for not meeting you at the airport, but things have been such a rush when I just got away from the office. Oh, forget it. I've been on the go ever since early this morning, and I'm leaving for Paris tonight. You know, that sounds just like the Toronto office. I've been with this firm for ten years, and it's always been hectic. And we keep moving. You're a stranger in London, aren't you? Well, I don't know a soul. Actually, I 
was in London just for a day once, during the war. I was stationed up north. I couldn't see much in a day. I'll be back from Paris next week, and I'll show you the sights. Oh, thank you. How about a drink before we get down to business? I'd love one. Would you care to sit? Thanks. You'll find cigarettes on the table if you want one. Gave them up three months ago. What'll you have? Something wrong? Uh, no, no, I'll have a scotch. Oh, fine. You know, that's my favorite, too. I like it neat, but I expect you'd like to have soda, eh? A little, if it's not too much trouble. No trouble, it's all here. There we are. Well, here's the business. Your idea, perfect. I suppose you hesitated just now because you realized I'm blind. I'm surprised the Canadian office didn't let you know. But don't worry, I do pretty well. You certainly do. I was stupid of me. I, I'm sorry I wasn't at the airport to meet you. Oh, forget it. To look at, or cosmetically, as the doctors say, there's nothing wrong with my eyes at all. Therefore, I don't wear glasses. Also, I, I prefer this cane to a white one, so how could you tell? You manage so well. Well, once I've been shown around, as I was in this suite today, I have a pretty keen sense of location. You know, one great compensation for blindness is that the other senses become sharper. Why not let me send someone from the office to stay with you? Oh, no, no, you don't. I've just got rid of one. I had a secretary, a darn good girl, in the office. The only trouble was she thought she should devote her life to me outside the office. She hovered around. Fortunately for me, she married one of our traveling salesmen. A kind of dedicated girl. Yes, I know exactly what you mean. I suppose she just had to have someone to take care of, and she figured that he was more in need of sympathy than I was. He certainly is now. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we'll do it your way. Are you ready for another drink? No, no thanks, I won't have none. Well, how about getting down to business? You, uh, know why I'm here? Yes, of course, but I may not have all the details. Well, uh... Briefly, the deal is this. We're organizing a big sales campaign, spending barrels of money just to convince people that Revier perfumes are the most glamorous and desirable in the world. You plan some tie-ups? Yes, with the major dress designers. Roughly, uh, it'll come out in full-page ads with a gorgeously dressed girl saying something like, uh, Revier perfumes are an indispensable accessory to my uh, so-and-so gown. Yes, yeah, sounds a wonderful idea. Oh, I'm glad you like it. As a matter of fact, we've already tied up all the big houses in the States. I want to do the same here now. Leave the detail work to your office, and then I shall go on over to Paris. The office is yours. Well, what I need now is a list of all the top dress designers in England. Oh, I can let you have those right away. Oh, that's fine. Then I can make appointments for tomorrow. <laughs> Mr. Vine, please. First floor, sir. The lift just behind you, sir. Thank you. Just two more, Janet, dear. I don't know how to thank you. It's easy. Make my check a little larger. Oh, Freddie. Hey, watch it. So sorry. It's all right. Freddie, would you send the dresser in here, please? Oh, she can't be at two places at the same time, either. I need help to get out of this straitjacket. Models. Oh, excuse me. Hmm? Could you tell me where I could find Mr. The straits are in here. I'm so sorry. I'm terribly busy. Thank you. Very well. I'll see to it. Thank you. Goodbye. Can I help you? My name's McCall. I have an appointment with Mr. Vine, your sales manager, at 3.30. One moment, sir. Vine, There's a Mr. McCall to see Mr. Vine. Mr. Vine is with the but checking on some prints that are wanted at the conference at once. Would Mr. McCall wait? Very well, Miss Howard. Would you care to wait, Mr. McCall? Certainly. Won't you sit down? Which chair do you recommend? The one on your left is most comfortable. Thank you. What's 
going on in there? We're launching the new winter styles. It's a busy day. Taking pictures out there and a cocktail party in here. Keeps you on the go, eh? Why, what a lovely dress. Thank you. Yes, sir. I'll be right over. She's gone out for a moment. Oh, dear. Look, you can do it for me. I can't get up my zip. It seems to have got caught in the seam and I'm in such a hurry. Could you just start it for me? I can certainly try. You use the Braille system. Yes, it's a great system. Oh, thank you very much. It's a pleasure. You're not British, are you? What makes you say that? And that tie you're wearing. Oh, is it that bad? As a matter of fact, I'm from Canada. But you're from North America, too, aren't you, by that accent? Yes, that's right. As a matter of fact, I lived in America till I was 16. Oh. Lots of wolves in America, especially Canada. It's pretty cold there. <laughs> it makes the best martyrs in the business. I know the recipe. You just wave a bottle of vermouth over a glass of gin. What's wrong with the It's all business. All you ever think about is business. Well, that's the only way to stay in business, to keep things <laughs> You won't forget your promise. No, all the rest of my love. I'm glad you like it. Now, girls, now, girls, you're sure you haven't left anything behind that last time? It's a splendid it. show, ever so good. Thank you so when much, girls. When are we going to get paid? Paid? Oh, tomorrow by check, as you I know. hope so. But always, you can rely on we me. Really I'll call you, girls. Come but on, you use the back stairs, please. Oh, you again. Oh, those people down the corridor. People? Yes, down there. There's nobody there. But there must be. They, they've just passed this way. Just a minute. Nobody there. Well, then they took the elevator. Sh tell me, where are the stairs? Stairs? Yes, show me where they are. Just a minute. This is the fifth floor. You'll never beat that elevator downstairs. And look, this fast pace may work in Canada, but I... Oh, I'm terribly sorry. I didn't know. I I'm so sorry. Oh, forget it. What was so important about the people who left in the elevator? Well, there was a man there, and I thought I recognized his voice. A friend of yours? An old friend. I'm really very sorry for everything. I, I wish I could help. Forget it. You didn't know. Wait a minute. Perhaps you can help. Do you work here? Yes, I'm a model. Uh, right here in Bartell Gardens? Most of the time. Well, is there somewhere quiet where we can talk? It's terribly important. Well... Please. All right. In here. Oh, be careful. There are some stairs. Oh, thank you. Where are we? It's a dressing room. The other girls have already gone home. All right, Mr. Oh, Mike McCall. Well, how can I help you? Well, this is going to sound crazy to you, but uh, that voice I heard... The voice of a man leaving that cocktail party belongs to a person that I've been wanting to find for 14 years. What do you mean? Well, he was responsible for the death of four of my friends and my own blindness. Maybe you'd better sit down, Mr. McCall, and start at the beginning. Oh, no, thank you. I don't smoke. It all began in 1943. I was flying bomber missions when my luck ran out. You see, Mr. Patel, if we nip in the waist here and flare the skirting an inch or so, it will lift up the bust line and emphasize the narrow waist. Turn round, dear. But then it will be simple. Then it will be simple to maintain this false but full effect. Uh, don't you agree? Hmm. Mm -hmm. well, turn round, dear, will you? Yes, I like it. All right, dear, you can go. 
Then I'll issue final instructions. Yes, attend to it right away, will you, Freddy? Pardon? Well, Freddy, what is it? Uh, these are the guards we're photographing now. I've added two more. I thought we'd get Janet Hillier to model them. Hmm. I was lying on the floor of the hut bleeding when I heard that voice. His voice. Then I heard the Commandant congratulate him on his cooperation. But you didn't see who he was. No, I, I had a head wound and blood covered my eyes. I didn't see him. What happened after that? Oh, hospitals. They tried hard to save my sight, but it was useless. I was blind. And you were never able to find out the name of the man who betrayed you? Well, I tried for two years with the help of the War Crimes Commission, but after that I just gave up. I thought it was useless. And until today. You mean to say you recognized a voice after all these years? It was his voice. The same that I heard in the prison camp. It's been with me ever since, and it always will be. But I don't understand. I know I couldn't remember. You're not blind. You lose one sense and the others sharpen. You begin to remember things that you thought unimportant before. But, Mr. McCall, why, after all these years... What's your name? Hillier. Janet Hillier. Miss Hillia, would you mind taking a few steps around this room? Well, I... I'm trying to prove a point. All right. By the weight of your steps, I'd say around 110 pounds. Uh, would you turn round again? That dress you're wearing, it rustles like silk, but it sounds lighter. Could it be nylon? Wait. That perfume you're using, that's easy because it's one of ours, Autumn Leaves by Revier, but it's all mixed up with a soapy shampoo smell. Did you wash your hair this morning? Clay, will you get all these finished? Oh, I think so, Mr. Bartell. Have Janet Hillier model the brocade ball gown next week. Well, that's a problem. She wants to go away for a couple of days next week. Oh, is she here now? Yes, she's in the dressing room. Well, I'll ask her myself. Wait here a moment. I shall never forget that voice I heard in there today. And I'm determined to find the man it belongs to. Mr. Bartell? Oh, Mr. Bartell? Oh, Mr. Bartell? Oh, Mr. Bartell? Oh, I've got something to show you. Le Dernier Cree. Let's see them in my office. Mm -hmm. But how can I help you? These people who got into the elevator had been attending a cocktail party. That's right. There's a party every time they launch a new range of style. I'd like to find out who was there. How could I get hold of a copy of the guest list? Lenny Clay usually handles the invitation. Do you know him well? Pretty well. Well enough for him to give you a copy? I think so, but why not ask Mr. Bartell? No. This would involve his customers, and he might object. I think I'd rather try Clay. It's not such a serious thing to ask for. He may give it to me, but I might have to explain to him what it's all about. Can he be trusted to keep it secret? Yes, I believe so. Then you do what you think best. Oh, I have to go. If I get the list, where can I get in touch with you? Well, I'm staying at the Carlton. Uh, could you bring it round tonight and perhaps stay to dinner? But I... You probably know these people, and you could tell me about them then. <laughs> Look... I like you when you're talking seriously, but, well, a model hears an awful lot of wolf howls, and I always make it a habit. I promise you, no wolf will howl tonight. <laughs> All right, then. May I show you to the elevator? Thank you. Would that be all right? Well, that's fine. Don't worry. I'll get it for you. Good. Here you are. You'll be all right now. I'll see you later, Miss Hillier. Oh, we'll decide later, Freddy. Oh, Janet. Mm -hmm. Oh, yes, Mr. Bartell. Uh, who is your friend? His name's McCall, Mike McCall. Was he attending the designer's convention at the Savoy? 
Oh, no, he's with Ravier Perkins. He's staying at the Carlton. Janet. Oh, please excuse yes, me. Certainly. Look, Janet, look, we have some very important uh, modeling for you to do next week. Uh, Clay tells me that you want a couple of days off. Do you think you could postpone this trip? Well, I... <laughs> All right, Mr. Bartell. Thank you, Janet. Lenny. Yeah? I want to talk to you. Yeah, right after this shot. Just ten minutes, then I'm all yours. All right. I want that wine well iced. Yes, sir. Oh, you haven't even forgotten the flowers, have you? No, sir. I have the records in the right order, sir. Oh, perhaps you'll show me how the machine works. The one on the right to start, the one on the left to stop. Like that? That's correct, sir. All finished for the day. I'll get those proofs first thing in the morning. Uh, it's 7.30. You have a dinner appointment, Mr. Bartell, remember? Oh, yes, yes, of course. I'd uh, forgotten. You'll have to cancel it, Clay. What, what shall I tell them? Oh, tell them something's come up that I have to attend to myself. Very well. Can I help? No, 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 you can go. I'll lock up when I leave. Night. Good night. You have a Mr. McCall staying there, Michael McCall. Uh, what is his room number, please? Room 201, sir. Shall I ring? Uh, no, no. I just want to send something over to his room. Miss Hillier, let her come in, will you? Are you all right? It's lucky I've got a hard head. Oh, it isn't as hard as I thought it was. Will somebody please tell me what's been happening? Oh, Inspector, this is a friend of mine, Miss Hillier. Inspector Barry. Miss Hillier? Well, go on, Mr. McCall. As I was telling you, I was sitting on the sofa over there, just listening to some music, when someone came in at the door. I asked who it was quite a number of times, but they didn't answer. And then I heard the click. Click? What kind of click? Well, the gun being cocked. How do you know it was a gun? Well, I've heard the sound many times before. Where? During the war. So you heard the click of a gun, and then what happened? Then he fired at me, so I ducked and... But I knocked the table over on the way down, and, and I hurt my head. Oh, how awful. Oh, well, he was just using me as a target. I guess he must have been scared or thought he'd got me, because he didn't stay around to check up. You say he. How do you know it was a man? It just seems more logical to suspect a man. I see. You have no idea who it might have been? No, none at all. Of course, there may be people who don't like me, but I can't think of anyone who wants to murder me. Very well, Mr. McCaw, I shall make my report to headquarters. I may have to question you again. Well, you know where to find me, Inspector. Evening, Miss Hillier. All right, Sergeant. 
Where to now, sir? We'll question the receptionist now. All right, officer. Well, now they've gone, we can get on with our evening. Waiter, have you reset the table? Yes, sir. And have you brought me some glasses? Yes, sir. Good. Would you put them down on that end of the table, please? Very good, sir. Thank you. Oh, Miss Hillier, you'll find a cigarette in the box. Of course, you don't smoke, do you? Waiter, is the wine all right? It isn't spoiled. Perfect, sir. Good. Well, that's all, thank you. Now you can go. Thank you, sir. I bet this hotel hasn't seen so much excitement for years. How can you take it all so calmly? We mustn't make a noise like that. Otherwise, they'll think someone else is taking a pot shot at me and come back and spoil our evening. Listen. No, we seem to be safe. You better tell me when it's full. That's enough. Thank you. You know, you're a very tactful young lady. Why? You're wearing another of our perfumes tonight. Oh. Oh, that's it. That's enough. Well, here's to attempted murder. As long as it's unsuccessful. Are you crazy? I've never been more sane in my life. But you almost got yourself killed and you're acting like, like a kid. Yes, but don't you realize, Miss Hillier, this proves I'm right. That voice belongs to the man that I've been searching for for 14 years. How do you know? Well, nobody else would want me out of the way. Won't you sit down? Thank you. But why didn't you tell the police? I don't want the police in this. Not just yet. Haven't you let this become an obsession with you? Maybe. I mean, suppose you are right. Suppose it was the man. How did he know where to find you? I don't know. I can't figure that out. I got that list you wanted. I'm afraid I had to tell Lenny the truth, but I got it. The, the guest list? Yes. Here it is. Of course. There's one way that this man with a voice would know where I am. How? Well, he was among the guests right there in the reception room with me. Yes. And you mean he might have recognized you? And followed me here. It wouldn't be difficult. And his name... is on this list. It's in Braille. <laughs> yes, I took the liberty of having it typed in Braille. I... That's very kind of you. There are seven names. I eliminated all the women and one of the men. A Frenchman, with an accent you could cut with a knife, so... Speaking of knives, I'm hungry. How about some dinner? <laughs> Nothing like being shot at to work up an appetite. Room service, please. <laughs> I'm afraid I've been talking too much. My dear Janet, people never talk too much when they're being interesting. Well, I've just been lucky, I guess. For the last year or so, I've worked a lot. But that's the way it goes. I mean, for a few years, one kind of face and figure is in vogue, and, and you work like mad. Then another kind of face comes along, and you're a dead pigeon. You mean fun while it lasts, eh? Oh, I love it. I meet all sorts of people. Tell me, why have you never married one of these people? Well, I, I just haven't had time. Oh, no, you'll have to do better than that. Well, I... I haven't met one with enough money. I mean, you know about us models, don't you? Not about you. That's just front. Now that we're letting our hair down, what about you? Well, uh, maybe I haven't had enough money. <laughs> Come on. It was a straight question. I've never married because... Because I've never met anybody that I ever really wanted to marry. You're still evading the question. All right. You asked me. I talked just now about front. I, too, have my defenses. But that's very understandable. For your own protection? You're a bright girl, aren't you? I'm a working girl. It's getting late. 
I've got to get home. Oh, wait. Just a minute. Mayor. You're a very pretty girl. You'd better go home. See all the people on that list tomorrow. It's a date. No. Yes, Have all the morning newspapers sent it to me, will you please? All of them, yes, sir. All of them, yes. I could convince you it would be far better for you not to come along. Mike, I'm coming along if only to save you the taxi fare. Yes, but you shouldn't get involved in this. I got you that guest list, didn't I? Yes, you did. Then, Mr. McCall, I'm already involved. All right, you win. Oh, by the way, you like my tie? Why, yes, it's very nice. I had it sent over to the hotel this morning. I, I hoped you'd approve. First on the list is Fleming Textiles. I guess it's no good asking you to stay in the car. <laughs> you guess right. And let's do it this way. You talk to him and I'll listen to his voice. All right. And if Fleming isn't the man you're looking for, Mike? Then I'd like to ask him a few questions. All right. Oh, there it is. Fleming Textiles. Tell Claire I want to see him as soon as he comes in. And get me the early editions of all the evening newspapers. Come in. Good morning. Miss Hillier, what are you doing here? Hello, Mr. Fleming. I want to introduce Mr. McCall. Glad to meet you. How do you do? Excuse me, I'll just close the door. Ah, what can I do for you? Well, Mr. McCall would like to ask you a few questions, if it's all right. What kind of questions? Well, you were at the party at Bartell Gowns yesterday. That's right. Did you know any of the other guests? A few. Some I met for the first time. Why? Well, do you know any of them who, during the war, were captured and sent to a prison camp? No. No, none that I can think of. But then I know these people only as business associates. What's all this about, anyway? Well, I'm trying to locate a man who was in the forces with me. I have reason to believe that he was at that party. So Miss Hillier is helping me call on all the guests. I see. Well, I'm sorry I can't help you. Well, thank you very much. Well, that takes care of the first one. Yes. There are six more. Now, this is very effective, madam. The black beads on the pink, I'm sure, pursuit you. Would you like to try it on? Well, I... I love the design, but I... I think it's a bit heavy. What do you think, Mike? Well, that's feel. The next one's milk. 
Will this material suit you, madam? No, I'm afraid not. Very good, madam. Thank you, just the same. Thank you. Dr. Tomlinson. The next one's Phillips. I hope we can catch him before he goes to London. It's 12.30 already. Now, this handbag, madam, was carried by one of the models at Bartels yesterday. We have them in all sorts of fabrics and also in hide. Perhaps we could have one made to your specification. This is a charming episode, Miss Hiller. We have it in all pastel shades. Blue, pink, pale green, apricot. Well, thank you for showing me your range. I hope we haven't taken up too much of your time. Oh, it's a pleasure. Well, that leaves just one more. Adam's the photographer, eh? Here. Mike. Come on. Let's go. Adam. You're late. What's bothering you? Adam's. I can't see why we use him. Now what? Oh, the usual delays, waiting while Adam prints his proofs and nurses his hangover and his work isn't that good. Mr. Bartell likes him. I can't see why. There are a dozen other photographers as good as he is and much more reliable. Is Mr. Bartell in? Yes, he wants to see you right away. But be careful, he's in a bad mood. That makes two of us. Mr. Bartell? Where have you been? Getting the proofs from Tony Adams. Giving him coffee and brandy for his hangover while he printed them. We can't use that. Well, it can be retouched. Not by Tony Adams. Not the way his hands are shaking. Mr. Bartell, I know you like I'll him, I'll pick the photographer I want to use. Look at them. We can't use that. Look. Mm. Have Janet and Tony come in later on today to retake them. Tony Adams is in no condition to work today. And Janet's not available. Oh, uh, why not? Well, I, I got these printed first. As soon as I saw them, I knew they'd have to be redone, so I telephoned Janet. She, she can't work today. She's showing the town to a man named Mike McCall. Hmm? McCall. He's a Canadian. He's over here for a few days on business. She's with him today? Yes, that, that's what she said. I, I telephoned her first thing this morning, just as she was leaving the house. He's an interesting chap, this McCall. He's blind. When I gave Janet the guest list last night... What guest list? Oh, yes, the... the list of the guests who were at the cocktail party. She wanted it from a call. I... I can't tell you why. I, I gave my word I wouldn't. But it was of the utmost importance. You gave her a copy of that list. And she gave it to McCall. Well... I didn't see any harm in that. Get out. Do you want me to, to get out? Oh, Clay, Clay, I'm sorry. Call me tomorrow, will you? I'm sorry I blew up. to you, Tony. What about? Oh, sure, those proofs. There, they stink. You're gonna fire me? <laughs> no, 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 no. Of course not. We're old friends. Sure, buddy. Look, Tony, has anyone called you this morning? Oh, your stooge Clay's been bothering me all the morning when I wanted to sleep, but... You're all alone now? Yeah. Good. Stay that way. Don't go out, and don't open the door to anyone until I get there. I'm not going any place. Since you're coming over, bring some money. The cost of living's terrific. We'll talk about it when I get there. Just do as I say. Don't open the door to anyone, understand? I said, do you understand? Yeah, do you. I'm broke. All right, Tony. But don't let anyone in till I get there. Look, nobody comes here but bill collectors. And they never get in. Good. I'm coming over. This Tony Adams we're going to see, do you know him? Yes, I do. He's a photographer. What's he like? Oh, he's all right, but he drinks too much. There aren't many places he can work now. Is he a good photographer? 
I think he has been. He makes a lot of mistakes. How much further to his place? Uh, with this traffic, who knows? But he'll be in. Lenny called me from his apartment this morning to retake some photographs. Tony's hands weren't very steady. He's probably sleeping at all. any time getting over here? Anyone been here? No one at all. What's the panic? I told you there's no one here. Did you bring some money? More than you expect. I'll have to take you on a nice long trip. It's in this block someplace, but I've got to find somewhere to park. Wait a minute, wait a minute. McCall. Things are falling into place. Vine was talking about him yesterday when I was working. Canadian. Perfume business. That's right. Now look, Tony, if he comes now, up here... Why... time, my head's working on only two cylinders. When he comes up here, you want me to forget that you were ever a prisoner of war. And if I do, I get a nice long trip. That's right. Look, Tony, you've been working hard. Oh, thank you, Bob, for the consideration. But what I want to know is why. Why I'm not to tell him. It doesn't matter why. Oh, but it does. He might know exactly why the Germans repatriated you when you were perfectly healthy. And why you never mentioned where you come from. Or that you were even in the army. Look, Tony... My work's been very valuable because I happen to know a few things about you. Right. Right. So you know a few things about me. But in a few minutes, someone may come up here. I want to know what these things are. And I want you to say nothing. You do, eh? Look, Tony, I've been very good to you, haven't I? <laughs> I mean, you owe me a couple of favors. Oh, cut it, Robert. I know my work's slipping and that you keep me to stop me talking. I know what the word is. Blackmail. But it's been a very gentle blackmail up to now. But you're afraid of something, Robert. And I smell more money in this than a photographer's fees or a pleasure cruise. Don't, don't, don't push me, Tony. Oh, look, Robert, I drink. It's a bad habit and it costs plenty. So let's start talking real money, eh? Well, that's about the best I can do. no elevator. Could it be anything but the top floor? It's number 44. Come on. Oh. Oh, I knew that would happen. What's the matter? The heel of my shoe. I cracked it getting out of the car. Oh. Oh, my ankle. Oh. Is it bad? Well, it's not good. Well, you stay there and rest. How many floors up to his apartment? Three more, Mike. You can't go alone. Oh, yes, I can. I wish you wouldn't. Oh. All right, Mike. Walk up slowly. I'm sorry. Don't you worry. I'll see him alone. I'm tired of being a hack. Tired of working. 10,000, Robert, then I can go where I want. Take the pictures I want, when I want. I don't have 10,000. Oh, don't give me that. I tell you, I don't have it. And even if I did, I wouldn't... Just have... write a check for 10,000. You're drunk. You can't be trusted. You haven't got much time. Neither of you.
gun in his hand, sir. Okay. That's all for now. Thank you. Well, Mr. McCall, you always seem to be getting into trouble in my district, in my hours of duty. Here, Mike. Wipe your hand. That won't wipe the prints off this gun. But I told you I had it in my hand. You don't have to say anything, McCall. But if you do, it may be used against you. Oh, I, I know all about that, but I tell you, I didn't kill Tony Adams. Why were you visiting Adams? I was searching for someone who was in the forces with me, that's all. How'd you come to get that cut on your hand? Uh, on the way up, I... I broke a glass lampshade. I guess it must have got cut then. You told me you stood outside the door, you heard voices, and then a shot. Did you hear what they said? No. Then what? Then I tried the door and it was open. Mm-hmm. Go on. I stumbled in front of something by the door and, and I fell. And then I started searching for my stick and, and I felt him. And then I felt blood and then the gun. That's why I had it in my hand. And then? Well, then, uh, then the policeman came in and... And then Miss Hillier. Too bad, Miss Hillier. You weren't with Mr. McCall when he entered the room. I wasn't only because I broke the heel of my shoe and I hurt my ankle. Yes, I believe you, Miss Hillier. Perhaps you'd better sit down. Your ankle's still swollen. Inspector, you're forgetting. Mike's blind. He can't see to shoot a man. People have been shot in the dark before. And I suppose Tony Adams just stood there letting it happen. Only you can explain that. You were found alone in this room with a gun in your hand. But I didn't kill him. Figures the other way, McCall. I admit you still baffled me. I don't believe you told me the truth about that shooting at your hotel. What are you trying to hide? I've nothing more to say. Then you'll have to come down to headquarters. And before I'm through, I'm going to find out a lot more about you. You'll have to come along too, Miss Hillier. Inspector, you're making a great mistake. Me? It looks like you made it. Miss Hillier's statement that there was insufficient time from the moment he left her on the stairs for McCall to reach Adams, talk to him and kill him, was enough not to hold McCall. That and the fact that her statement was verified by the woman who lives in the house who saw them come in. She says, too, that it was only minutes later that she heard the shot. We're going to need a whole lot more on McCall or on whoever it was committed to murder. Yes, you're right. We haven't very much to go on. We've had less. Send him in. Come in, Inspector. A cigarette. No, thanks. Do you know anybody by the name of Tony Adams? Very well. He's a photographer. Do you employ him? Yes, I do. Mr. Bartell, I'm afraid that Tony Adams will not be working for you anymore. How do you mean? He was found dead in his apartment today. That's not possible. It's quite true. He was murdered. This is fantastic. I spoke to him today. And Clay saw him this morning. Clay? Who's he? My secretary. He went round to his apartment to get some photographs we needed. Mm -hmm. But I want to speak to this Clay. Go on. Well, I spoke to him on the telephone about his work just before lunch. Did he say anything to you about expecting anybody to call? No, no. You know, this news is shock. As a matter of fact, I spoke to him very sharply on the telephone. Well, now, oh, poor Tony. I know how you must feel, Mr. Bartell. But how did it happen? Who, who did it? To be shot. 
Well, we have a suspect, but not enough evidence to go on. What do you know about Adams? Did he have many friends? Ever mention anything to you about anyone causing him trouble? Well, I didn't know him that well, but he was a very likable person. He drank too much. Mr. Bartell, you say Mr. Clay saw Adams this morning. May we have him in? Well, certainly. Will you send Mr. Clay in here, please? Yes, sir. You know, Inspector Clay told me something this morning. He gave my guest list of yesterday's party to a Miss Janet Hillier, one of our models. Oh, what's that proof? Well, she wanted it for a man named McCall. Now, Tony Adams was on that list, but McCall wanted it for a reason of the utmost importance. Stand forward, Mr. Bartell. Oh, yes, Lenny, this is Inspector Baring. He wants to ask you a few questions. Mike? Oh, here I am. <sighs> Strange how every city has its own sounds. I'm sorry it took so long. The doctor was busy. What did he say about your ankle? Oh, he put a tight bandage on it and said it would be all right. Oh, good. You know, I'm terribly sorry that I ever dragged you into all this. I forced my way, remember? And it's you I'm concerned about. Janet, sit down. Tell me honestly, do you think that I killed Tony Adams? Of course not. I heard that voice again. You did? Where? Inside Tony Adams' room. There were two men there. I heard them distinctly. So it's either Adams' voice or the murderer's. But I don't know which. Why didn't you tell the police? Tell them what? That one of those men betrayed five people 14 years ago. They can't do anything. All the records are burned. But that man's afraid of me. I must meet him. I've waited so long. But suppose it was Tony Adams. Well, I shall only know that when I talk to the other man who was in the room. But where can you look? Tony's was the last name on the list. I don't know. Did you hear anything that was said? Anything that might be a lead? No, nothing definitely, but... But the tone of his voice couldn't have been more distinctive. Think, Janet. Think hard. Could there have been anybody at that party whose name was not on the list? All I remember were the ones we called on, except for the women, the Frenchman, and Mr. Bartell. But, Janet, of course Mr. Bartell's name wasn't on that list. You said the guests came out. Yes, but that was what the receptionist told me. I mean, suppose he had escorted them out and I heard his voice. That would be perfectly logical. <sighs> Mike, that's crazy. Mr. Bartell could never have murdered Tony. But didn't you tell me that Adams drank a lot and he couldn't find many places to work nowadays? Yes. Well, don't you see how it's all fitting in? Maybe Adams had something on Bartell, or Bartell even killed Adams in order to stop him talking to me. Now you've got me wondering. Come on, Jackie. Let's drive round to Bartell's immediately. Come in. Hello, Miss Hillier. Hello, Sergeant Peterson. Mr. McCall. Why are you here, Sergeant? You'll have to come with me to Inspector Baring's office, sir. You too, Miss Hillier. McCall recognized the voice of his betrayer amongst the guests of the party and wanted to trace him, Miss Hillier told me. I gave her the list. Signed, Leonard Clay. Well, that's the statement I took. Well? Well, I don't deny it, Inspector. I did ask Miss Hillier for a list. You better give it to him, Janet. And so you started to trace the man whose voice it was. Yes. And kill him. I don't know. Honestly, I don't know. You trying to tell me you don't know whether you killed Adams or not? No, I didn't say that. What I mean is I haven't met the man yet. I don't know what I'd do if I did meet him. Every name on this list is crossed off but one. Adams. We saw all the other guests. And drew a blank until you came to Tony Adams. But I tell you, there were two men in Adams' room. I heard them distinctly. I heard their voices. That's what you told me. But it doesn't make it so. One of those voices belonged to a traitor. Why didn't you tell me this before? Well, everything I have told you has been the truth. What I kept to myself was... was my business. But now that you know... McCall, we've learned a lot about you in the past few hours. Sergeant Peterson has been on the telephone to Toronto. We believe all your story up to the point where you started up those stairs prisoner of war camp, the traitor, your testimony to the War Crimes Commission. It's all here on the record. I think you recognize the voice of a traitor. You were all keyed up, tense, alone. I suppose breaking the heel of my shoe was part of the plot. Is that what it was, Miss Hillier? 
A plot? I don't believe you heard the voice of Adams in the hall, but after you entered the room, the voice you'd waited here for 14 years. I don't believe there was anyone else in the room with Adams. You quickly drew a gun and shot him. Then who went out of the window? Maybe no one. Adams might have opened it to get some fresh air. Inspector, if Tony was the man Mike was looking for, he'd have been in the armed forces. I knew Tony a little, and I, I never remember him talking about it. I certainly never remember him mentioning about being a prisoner of war. And he would have had to have been all of those things for Mike to have... Lieutenant Anthony Robert Adams, Royal Artillery, captured Italy in 1943. Prisoner of war, Germany, in 1943. Repatriated Swiss Red Cross, December 1943. All from the Army file. Inspector, I did not kill Tony Adams, but at this moment I have no way to prove it. McCall, we have your war record here. Very good one. And your record after the war. Very fine, too. The jury will be very impressed. But right now, Michael McCall, you're under arrest for the murder of Anthony Robert Adams. Hillier, you're satisfied you played no active part in the murder of Adams, but you are implicated. You'll be needed as a witness. You're not being held. Inspector, you're going to hold him? Yes, he's under arrest. Are you really going to do it? I've done it. Well, if I'm to be your guest, Inspector, there are a few things that I shall need from my hotel. Soap, towel, shaving equipment, all furnished. But have you got any books printed in Braille? All right. Dr. Peterson, accompany McCall back to his hotel, will you? If you don't mind, I'd like Miss Hillier to come, too. There are a few things that she could help me to pack. Miss Hillier is under no charge. Oh, Janet, the book I'm reading is by my bed. And you'll find some shirts in the wardrobe. You're allowed to smoke on duty, Sergeant. There are some here. Oh, thank you. Sergeant, I get the impression you don't trust me. We watch while we trust. Mike. Mike, what have you done? I have a job to do. But you're only making things worse. Yes, but I have to do it my way. And let's get out of here. We better not take my car. We'll pick up a taxi. All right, Peterson, all right. Come back to headquarters. <laughs> Alert all cars. Pick up Michael McCall. Height, six feet one. Brown hair, 180 pounds. Fresh complexion, blind. If you can't tell, McCall is under arrest for murder. With him a woman, Janet Hillier. Five feet six, 110 pounds. Redhead. Turn up. Yeah. Um, get Freddy to take it in here a couple more inches and bring the line back down to here. Yes, you can go now. Good night, Mr. Bateau. Hey, Lenny, come on, step out of it. I just heard on the radio that McCall was arrested for Tony's murder. My statement helped to do it. Well, why so gloomy? You did your duty. A man has been murdered, and it's up to you to give any information that police ask for. Maybe, but I've got a lot of sympathy for McCall. What will happen to Janet? Nothing will happen to Janet. And if you're so brimming with sympathy, what about a little for Tony? To the left. How did you know your girlfriend Lucy keeps her key under the doormat? <laughs> she always keeps it there. Why? Oh. I don't know. So she won't lose it, I suppose. Well, that sounds feminine logic. What are you doing? Picking up some of Lucy's clothes so we can sit down. There's a sofa just in front of you. Are you sure your girlfriend won't be back? I told you. She had a two-day modeling job in Brussels. Speaking of Brussels, do you want to get there? Well, why should I want to go to Brussels? 
Because it would probably be harder for the police to find you there than here. And Lucy has a friend with a boat. I think I could persuade him to take us over. No. I've told you I've got an unfinished job to do here. My mistake. It probably wouldn't have worked anyway. Do you realize what you said? What? You said us. Take us over. Yes, I did. Didn't I? Thank you. Nothing from patrol. Nothing from the hotel. The man watching the Hillier girl's apartment. Mm, she's probably hiding him. Get to work on her. Locate her friends. They're hiding out somewhere. Very good. I know you're in a terrible spot, Mike. One hell of a spot. But the worst thing is dragging you into it, too. You tried to stop me from the beginning, please. Let's talk about things that are far more important. The police are sure to be searching for us, probably through your friends. I heard you put the lights on. Yes. Well, you better turn them out. You're right, Mike. Now, that would look nicely in wool. Yes, yes, it would. Light wool. Jersey. <sighs> you better go to bed. You look tired. I'll finish these. Oh, no, it'll just take another couple of hours. No, no, I'll handle them. You sure? Absolutely. Well, uh, shall I get the night porter to send you up some sandwiches? No, no, I should go myself in a minute and get some. Well, good night. Good night, Danny. Well, no luck yet, sir. We've got every available man looking. You can't get too far. Blind man trying to escape. He hasn't a chance. Oh, Mr. Bartell. What about the night, sir? Oh, I'm coming back, Joe. Just going across the street to get a drink for sandwich. Don't work too late, will you? Nothing like a good night's sleep, you know. <laughs> yes, I know what you mean. Mike, I have faith in your judgment, but, well, don't you think this running away is a mistake? Look, Janet, I know you think I should tell the police everything. So, supposing I do tell them that, that I thought it was Bartell in Tony Adams' room and, and they haul him in for questioning. Well, it sounds like the best thing to do. Yes, but it would only be his word against mine and all the evidence stacked against me. Shh! in Bartell's office when he comes in in the morning. I want to hear his voice first. Then I shall surrender to the police. I'm going with you. I'm through arguing about that. Besides, I need your help. <laughs> Mike, look. I still have the key to the dressing room with Bartell. Fine. Look, we'll go now. It's safer to spend the night at Bartell's than it is here. The police may come back. We'll take a chance on grabbing a taxi and get off a couple of blocks before the office. Janet. Yes. When all this is over, there's something I want to tell you. What is it, Mike? I've fallen in love. Mike. I love you too. Mm-hmm. <laughs> 
strange. The lights are on in the corridor. And look, there's a light in Mr. Bartell's reception room. Let's go over there. I don't think there's anyone in it. If I remember correctly, his room's right there. on in here. The porter's asleep downstairs. I'd better close the door. Perhaps you'd like to tell me everything in this room. By the clock's the best method. All right. I'd better get used to this, haven't I? Um, let's see. From where you are, seven o'clock is a sofa. you'd like to tell me what's on the desk? Um, well, there are three telephones. Oh, and those are sketches. Oh. And a lamp. Well, I guess that's about everything. You'd better turn out the lights before... Don't move, either of you. Mike, it's Bartell, and he's got a gun. And I'm going to use it. You're the one, Bartell. You're the one who killed those men in the prison camp to save yourself. And now you've killed Tony Adams to save yourself again. How did you get here? You're under arrest for murder. I escaped to find you. You're an escaped murderer and you've broken into my office. Shooting you will be self-defense. You're going to shoot Miss Hillier too? She hasn't escaped from anything. If you do, you'll hang for murder. I'll take my chances. Bartell, I'll, uh, I'll do a deal with you. If you don't harm Miss Hillier... You're a fool, McCall. Have all the lights gone? Yes. Why don't you stay there? This changes the situation, Bartell. This puts us on even terms. You're shooting at noises, but you haven't trained yourself to know what those noises mean. Now your gun is useless, and you're getting scared. You shouldn't have moved. I know exactly where you are. I've been waiting for this for 14 years. <laughs> Bartell, 
I'll take you down to headquarters. Are you all right, McCall? Yes, I'm all right, thank you, Inspector. Mike! Oh. Well, Mr. McCall, you certainly caused us quite a bit of bother. Yes, I'm sorry about your jaw, Sergeant. <laughs> so am I. I think you'd be better advised in future not to take the law into your own hands. Bartell had it coming to him. Yes, I guess he did. Inspector, how did you know we were at Bartell's? Well, I didn't know. It's my job to find you. I knew you worked at Bartell's. I decided to check. Well, I hope the remainder of your visit will be much more pleasant. It certainly will be. We wouldn't want you to leave the country with a bad impression. Well, there's no fear of that. <laughs> well, goodbye and good luck. Goodbye, Inspector. Goodbye, goodbye Inspector. Goodbye, Inspector. <laughs> Goodbye, Sergeant. Goodbye, Sergeant. When my business here is finished, I want to take a little part of this country back with me. The best part.